Okay, welcome to the virtual college exploration for all Illinois students sponsored by the Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling and StriveScan. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is just one of many different sessions happening. So be sure to check out the full schedule at IACAC.org. And this presentation is currently being recorded and will be available within about a week at that same website. So again, IACAC.org. So now I'd like to turn it over to our presenter, Julia. Thank you again. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining my session today. A little quick introduction before I get started. My name is not Richie Keynes, it's actually Julia Michaels. I am an admissions counselor from DePaul University. And I'm really excited to be presenting to you all today. In addition to working for DePaul University, I'm also a recent graduate. I just graduated from DePaul in May. So I'm really excited to not only be sharing with you some of my student experiences, but what could possibly be your unique path here at DePaul University. Please feel free to acquaint yourself with the question and answer box. I will be checking it frequently throughout my entire presentation to be able to answer a lot of your questions live on this screen. In addition, I will be attaching my contact information at the end of my session. So please do not hesitate to reach out if you come up and you discover that you have some questions. To get started, I'm going to start my presentation for you all. Like I said, I'm really excited to be here sharing with you guys, you know, DePaul University. So really quick, let me pull this up. Okay, so again, feel free to acquaint yourself with that question and answer box. I'll be checking it frequently. But this is the exciting part where you get to find out more about our institution, what the liberal arts is, and, you know, maybe possibly see yourself as a DePaul Tiger. So DePaul University is a small liberal arts college in Greencastle, Indiana. We are actually a university, meaning we have the College of Liberal Arts and we have a School of Music. So if you're interested in pursuing music performance, musical arts, or music education, you can do that here at DePaul as well. Our student body is just shy of 2000. As you can see, I have a student body diversity breakdown for you all. Um, and like I said, with our two schools, about 120 of our students are actually in that school of music. DePaul students come from 39 different states and 39 different countries, which is really exciting that DePaul has a global and national presence here, even for a small town in Indiana. About 30% of our students on campus are actually student athletes. So we have 23 varsity teams here at DePaul. We are division three. So if you're interested in pursuing college athletics um, at a competitive level, you can also do that here at DePaul. Again, if you're interested in that, please feel free to let me know and I can put you in contact with one of our coaches. We have 12 women's teams and 11 men's teams. So that's kind of our breakdown. Finally, the numbers I love to talk about most on this screen are gonna be the two in the middle. So we have 20% first generation college students, meaning 20% of our student body is the first in their family to ever go off to college, which is really exciting. And that means that we have a lot of support systems and resources on campus for those students as well. We really want to be promoting diversity, inclusion and equity on our campus. And that starts with making DePaul an accessible and affordable place for all. Additionally, we have 19% legacy students. So this means that someone in their family has attended DePaul University before. Um, maybe they have a sibling on campus, maybe an aunt, an uncle, a father, a mother, someone like that has attended DePaul before, meaning that they are familiar with us. They know our traditions. They know the power of a liberal arts education, which is really exciting that, you know, they're coming back. So that's a little bit about the makeup and demographics of DePaul, which I always think is fun to share. Continuing on, though, I want to talk about what is the liberal arts. Really, when it comes down to it, it's taking what you're learning in the classroom, which is an interdisciplinary curriculum, and applying it to your entire collegiate experience as well. So 
what you're learning in the classroom translates to different clubs and organizations on campus. It really reflects in a robust co-curricular experience. And three things that really stick out from our liberal arts experience compared to others are gonna be personal advising, the leadership opportunities and experiential learning. I'm gonna start first quickly with personal advising. Really here at DePaul, we promote interconnected relationships with one another. So our student to faculty ratio is only eight to one. Our average class size is 17. So the moment you set foot in a DePaul classroom, you're going to receive personalized attention. You're gonna know your professor's names and they're gonna know your name. They're gonna know if you're attending class or not. Our classes are small discussion based where we really get to have unique and fulfilling conversations about a variety of topics. In addition, personal advising doesn't just mean academic advising. It also means you know, the full experience. So we have residence assistance to help students transition to college life. Our first year experience program is not just a week long orientation, it's actually an entire year long program that you get to go through. You have a first year mentor who's an upperclassman on campus who can really help you adjust to DePaul academically, professionally, and socially, which is great to know um, that you're not just gonna be a number, you're gonna be a name and an individual and a face, and you're gonna have a multifaceted identity that DePaul is willing to work with and help guide you on your path. Leadership opportunities at DePaul are abundant. I mentioned that small discussion-based classes. Most of our students find themselves often talking a lot in class, really engaging in discussion, and that makes you a leader in your own right. Additionally, we have 120 clubs and organizations on campus, so students have a wealth of opportunities to become you know, leaders on executive councils and sit on board of directors and things like that and you know, the activities that they're passionate about. Additionally, we attract a lot of leaders to DePaul University as well. So students usually find themselves being a leader in their high school or some sort of thing like that. And then they can translate that into college as well, um, which is really great to know that we're attracting leaders to DePaul and then also producing them. Finally, experiential learning is so important to DePaul University and their values that I have an entire slide about it. So I'm gonna return to experiential learning in a little bit. But I just want to remind everybody, if you have any questions, please feel free to share them in the chat and I can get to them. It's important when talking about college to talk about academics. So I mentioned that we're a university. So on one side of my screen, you can see College of Liberal Arts. On the other side, you can see School of Music. And I know there's a big yellow line between the two, but trust me, that dividing line is not very rigid. We have School of Music students that take classes in the College of Liberal Arts. And we have College of Liberal Arts students who take classes in the School of Music. Just because your major is political science doesn't mean you can't take a violin lesson or a guitar lesson or a music history class and vice versa. You can be studying music education and take a really interesting psychology course or anthropology course. It's really important to know at DePaul that you get to choose your own path and that starts with academics. We have 49 different majors and 56 different minors within our College of Liberal Arts. I've listed the top 10 for you guys. And as you can see, it's quite a bit of variety, which is really exciting. We have strengths in a lot of our departments. So we're not just good at one thing. All of our departments have their own unique opportunities for students. If you don't see something that you're maybe interested in majoring in, don't worry, you can create your own major at DePaul. So we have students doing interdisciplinary studies where they create their own major. They pull different classes and faculty members from different departments to create, again, that own unique path that is individualized and personalized for them. Another beauty of the liberal arts is that you do not have to declare a major until the second semester of your sophomore year. We allow and actually encourage students to take a variety of classes in a bunch of exploratory subjects before choosing a major. So it's okay if you're undeclared or undecided on what you want to study. Additionally, two thirds of your classes here at DePaul are gonna be outside of your major. So we, again, really applaud and encourage students to you know, take a risk and take a class that they might not be comfortable in or they've never tried before. You never know what you might fall in love with at DePaul. To really quickly touch on the School of Music, I've listed the four music degree programs that we offer our students. I will say um, we have our own recruiter for the School of Music. And additionally, there is an audition process. So if you're interested in joining the School of Music, please feel free to let me know and I can put you in contact 
um, with Dr. Paulton, who runs our School of Music Admissions. Continuing on, um, something that sets us apart and that's unique from other institutions are our four programs of distinction. You do not have to be any particular major to join any one of the four programs listed. They are four-year programs encouraged for interdisciplinary study. They're for students who are interested in having that rigorous academic course load that they've maybe had in high school with APs or IB classes, but again, continuing that on until college. Additionally, it's not just the harder version of a class. It's more about thinking about topics from a different perspective. So working our way across the screen, I'm gonna start with the Honor Scholar program. Honor Scholar is for students, again, looking for that rigor within their academics. They get to participate in specialized seminars with only honor students that really challenge them to think outside the box about a lot of different topics. Really what you'd spend your time doing is learning a wealth of knowledge and then turning around your senior year and producing your own. The senior year thesis at the Honor Scholar Program is really that capstone project where students get to show off the skills that they've learned over the past three years. Students are required to pick a committee of faculty members, study a topic of their unique and you know, personalized decision, and then again, present that thesis at the end of their senior year. It's a very rewarding process for a lot of our students. And I encourage students that are in a lot of APs or IBs in high school to apply for our honors program. Environmental fellows is for students that are interested in environmental science and geology, but it's also for students maybe interested in political political science and public policy. Any student that's interested in advocacy or sustainability has a great wealth of resources available to them within the Environmental Fellows Program. Not only do we offer off-campus study and trips for these students, but we also have on-campus opportunities for field research experience. DePaul has a 520-acre nature park where a lot of students will go out and actually conduct research experiments within our own backyard. Management Fellows is gonna be for students who are interested in business and entrepreneurship. This can include a wide array of topics. Students and Management Fellows have interest in investment banking, personal finance, sales, marketing, public relations. So if any of these things sound interesting to you or something you wanna study, Management Fellows might be a great program to be a part of. There's an amazing internship opportunity for our students within their junior year where they actually get to go off campus and gain real work experience in a company for an entire six month period and earn credit for it. So again, if you're really interested in sales, we'll partner you up with a great sales firm in Indy or New York City or even global if that's what you're interested in. Some of our partners are listed as our recent outcomes because a lot of our students within this program find that they secure full-time job opportunities from this internship. So again, if you're interested in something like networking or entrepreneurship, Management Fellows might be the program for you. Finally, Media Fellows is for our communication-focused students. This again is a wide variety of topics. Maybe you're interested in journalism, radio or television broadcasting, production or design. Media Fellows again has that opportunity for internship where we partner up students with different companies ranging from Marvel Comics to the New York Times to Esquire Magazine to ESPN. So any of these types of opportunities are available to Media Fellows students. And again, they get to spend six months off of campus, really getting professional experience in their chosen field. Like I mentioned before, all of these are open to any and all majors. So it's okay if you're not set on being a communications you know, major, you can still join Media Fellows. You can be completely undeclared, but know you might wanna do something in the realm of business and apply for Management Fellows. All of these programs are live on our website if you are a senior. So if you're considering applying to DePaul, take a look at maybe applying for one of our programs of distinction. This is a program that you join as a senior in high school. So when you become a first year at DePaul, you automatically start in this program. There's no additional classes that you have to take. Rather, it's built into your curriculum. And if you have any more questions about our programs of distinction, again, please do not hesitate to use that question and answer feature. Now I really want to bridge, you know, things that I talk about that are more academic centered, you know, what's going on in the classroom is fantastic and really important to know. But what are we doing in terms of our, you know, college experience and campus life that is going to allow for students to be successful. One of the ways that we bridge that gap is between our eight centers on campus. 
I'm not gonna go into detail about all eight, but I am here to tell you that these centers have their own unique space on campus that really allows them to fulfill any students, you know, needs, wants, anything like that. Some that I'd love to touch on are the Hubbard Center for Student Engagement. This is a center dedicated to the student experience. It helps students find those internship opportunities that they might be looking for for a summer. It helps them gain career guidance. So if you don't have a resume or a cover letter, I know I didn't when I first entered college, I went to the Hubbard Center and I was able to produce that alongside a peer, con peer consultant. And you know, I walked away feeling a lot more confident when it came to what is my future career path? So a lot of professional and academic development can happen in these centers. But you, there's also other elements you know, to college. The Pulliam Center for Contemporary Media was a great outlet for myself as a student on campus. It works with student media. And if you haven't figured out yet, I really enjoy talking. So when I first came to campus as a first year student, being a part of a radio show sounded like a fun idea. It just sounded like something that I would enjoy doing. And for all four years while I was a DePauw student, I was able to have a radio show with my best friend where we got to talk about different topics each week and play music. Again, that's not what my chosen profession has been, but it was just an experience that really helped me gain some tangible skills and also, you know, just have a little fun along the way. If you're interested in learning more about any of these centers, I encourage you to check out the DePaul website, or again, please acquaint yourself with that question and answer feature or contact me after the presentation. I told you we'd kind of circle back to experiential learning because it is so critical to who we are as a campus here at DePaul. Experiential learning is really how we set ourselves apart from other institutions when it comes to the liberal arts education. A lot of our students who apply to DePaul are probably applying to other great academic institutions as well. And we pride ourselves on our academic and you know the professors that work at DePaul, the courses that are offered. We know that we produce a strong academic curriculum, but we also know that we couple that with experiential learning, which results in a transformative experience over your four years at DePaul. I wanna start by talking about the fact that, you know, our, academ our academic calendar looks a little different than every single university. We work on a 4141 academic calendar, meaning that we have two semesters that are very traditional like any other institution. You come to campus, you take four courses. We do not work in credit hours, but we work just in plain credits. So students find themselves taking four classes over four months very traditional in the sense of how a semester operates. Where we kind of change it up is that we offer two one month terms, one happening throughout the month of January for three weeks and one happening throughout the month of May, a little bit into June for three weeks. This is the opportunity for students to have exploratory learning possibilities where they can pursue their passions outside of their traditional semester. I wanna make full disclaimer that the things such as research, study abroad, internships, these can happen at any given moment in your DePaul career. You can have a summer internship. You can spend an entire semester abroad. You can do on-campus faculty student research while also taking classes at DePaul. But also these winter and May terms allow for more time to do another study abroad experience, have a three week long internship, do extra credit research during you know, the month of May. We're just trying to make these experiential learning opportunities as available as possible for students. So not only can you access any of these, any of these things during the semester, you can access them, them, them during the summer or any one month term as well. I'm gonna start with faculty student research because as a solely undergraduate institution, we really prioritize having students work within our campus labs. We do not have graduate students at DePaul University, meaning all of our attention from our professors goes to our undergrad students. And this means hands-on experience within different research labs on campus. I kind of hinted to it earlier that environmental fellows, they do a lot of research on our campus and a lot of practicums. But in addition, faculty student research can happen with outside of that program as well. You can be a biology major, you can be a physics major, you can be a political science major and still have research opportunities on our campus. All of our professors are continually working on different research projects at any given time. 
and they're always more than willing to include students within that research. Our students have gone on to actually be co-authors within published papers. So again, really unique opportunities that might only be presented to you as a graduate student, but here at DePaul, you have those opportunities beginning your freshman year. When it comes to study abroad, we are really huge advocates for students having a global learning experience. We love study abroad so much at DePaul that we're ranked number fourth in the nation for the number of students participating in our study abroad programs. We're also ranked number seventh in the nation for making it affordable. Just because study abroad, yes, there's a plane ticket involved does not mean we cannot make study abroad an inclusive and equitable space for our students. One of the most popular times to study abroad is during our winter and May terms. You get to have cultural immersion experiences for two to three weeks, traveling with faculty and fellow students to places that you might have only dreamed of. We offer trips each and every year to a variety of places ranging from Greece, Egypt, South Africa, Peru, Japan, Australia, Costa Rica. We've even gone to Antarctica. So if you can dream it, we can probably find a way to get you there. If you're interested in, you know, spending longer periods of time abroad, we can make that happen as well. We offer semester long study abroad programs to a variety of different universities across the globe. I was fortunate enough to actually live in Scotland for six months where I got to take classes at an institution that they all crowned credit towards DePauw. So again, this does not set you behind in any regards. You can still you know, complete a double or, or single major. You can still have minors and study abroad, which is really exciting. Finally, internship opportunities. 90% of DePauw students will graduate with at least one internship. Some students have up to six. So we really encourage students to get that hands-on experience, whether it's over the summer working for a company, maybe during you know, that winter term period, or even during the semester, DePaul uses internship opportunities to actually count for credit as well. Internships can also kind of cross over with study abroad. We've had students you know, have internship opportunities in India, China, Japan, Greece, Italy, England, you name it, a student has probably done some form of internship there where they get to combine multiple interests you know, through a global lens. I know I've covered a lot when it comes to experiential learning and there's still a lot more that I could cover. I always just like to preference that every student at DePaul University is gonna have their own unique path. It's gonna include different opportunities for them based on their academic and professional interest. So if you have any specific questions about, you know, how your major might align with a study abroad program or an internship, or how can you do faculty student research as a psychology major, please feel free to drop those in the chat. Or again, contact me afterwards so I can talk to you more about how we combine academics with the experiential learning component here at DePaul. Campus life is something that is an extremely important component when you know, deciding on a college or university. I know we're doing a lot of things virtually, so it might be hard to get an idea of exactly what campus is like, but this is my attempt at doing so and highlighting some of the things campus brings for their DePaul students. First to begin, we're 100% residential, which means that all of our students live, eat, work, sleep on campus. The point of this is that we really want to form intentional communities. We want you to get to know your classmates. We want you to enjoy dinner with your classmates. We want you to join student activities and organizations, have different groups within campus that you, you know, feel support from. So by having all of us live together, it really results in unique bonds and important interactions. No, this does not mean you live in a dorm for all four years of college, I promise you. DePaul University has a variety of living options for our students. We not only have specific floors for different affinity groups, but we also have houses and apartments and duplexes that students can live in. We have a vibrant Greek life here at DePaul. We have 24 chapters of fraternities and sororities here at DePaul. So you also have the option if you join one of those organizations to live there, again, we're all about having students choose their own unique path, but it's really great that we get to all live and work together as well. I mentioned this before, but we have 120 clubs and organizations. These range from student media to student government, 
to philanthropy and community service groups, to just plain fun groups like Outdoors Club or Ultimate Frisbee. If you're a student on campus, you are more than likely to be involved in more than one club. A lot of our students at DePaul are overly involved, which is amazing. They love to be as involved as possible. And sometimes that's serving on that executive board or board of directors. And sometimes it's just being a member. Students really get to choose the amount of time and effort they put into each club and organization, which is fantastic to know. Myself included, I was really passionate about student government and found myself serving on a lot of different boards, but I only dedicated one hour a week to student media and that was just the right amount. DePaul students have again that flexibility and adaptability to really define what their college experience is going to be. Additionally, if you don't see a club or organization that we offer at DePaul, please feel free to start your own. You can always do that at DePaul University. All you have to do is have one faculty sponsor and five friends and student government can include, can, student government can include that new club and organization for you. I hinted at this before again, 23 varsity teams, division three. I know division three isn't D1. It's not gonna be huge schools, but that doesn't matter. We still have such a great community of student athletes at DePaul University. I find it even more enjoyable to go out to sporting events and cheer for the people that you already know that are playing, the guy from your math class or the girl you sit next to at lunch sometimes. It's really fun to be able to go out and support your DePaul fellow Tigers at our sporting events. Additionally, our one huge event of the year, all of our sporting events are well intended, but my favorite one to mention to students is the Monon Bell game. For you Illinois students, you might have heard of Wabash College. It's only 45 minutes north of DePauw University and it's an all male school. And we play them every year in a football game. It's the last one of the season. And we play for this giant trophy that's a bell. We get very, very excited about this game. It is about attended by 10,000 people. And we're both schools with less than 2000 students. So we draw huge crowds for this game. It's really exciting. You feel like you're at a division one sporting event, yet you know, you know, your best friend might be out there on the field. So we still have fun elements like that here at DePaul. We have 200 concerts, art shows and performances a year on campus. Some of these are world-class musicians coming to us from all corners of the globe. And some are School of Music and you know the theater department productions. Every year we have musicals, operas and plays that are completely cast by students. If you're interested in you know maybe being a psychology major, but you've always been a part of theater in high school, you can still have that outlet here at DePaul. Additionally, we have an amazing art studio where students are allowed to be creative and express themselves. And we have lots of art shows, not only again from world renowned artists, but from our students as well. Finally, my favorite thing to talk about, the 20 plus speaker series at DePaul. We bring world-class leaders in their fields to DePaul University to not only give amazing lectures, but to connect with students on a personal level. I have pictured here Malala. She is the youngest Nobel Peace Prize recipient. Um, she came to campus in 2017 and gave an amazing lecture about you know, uniting the world and world politics. And it was incredible to hear her speak. We've also welcomed the likes of Bill Clinton, Margaret Thatcher, Peyton Manning, Jimmy Kimmel, Jane Goodall. Personally, in my time as a DePaul student, I got to see Jenna Fisher who played Pam on The Office. I've seen David Cameron, the former prime minister of the United Kingdom, Condoleezza Rice, former US Secretary of State. And I've also seen Ken Jennings who was on Jeopardy a wide variety of speakers come to our campus and give amazing free lectures for our students. If you're interested in learning more about campus life, please do not hesitate to reach out. I know I'm not a current student anymore, but I do know a little bit about the student experience here at DePaul. Additionally, I would love to put you in contact with a current student, maybe one of our tour guides or admissions ambassadors, and they'd be more than happy to answer any questions about what it's like to be a student at DePaul University. The fun part of the presentation, when it comes to the application process, I am a great resource for Illinois students when it comes to applying to DePaul. I'm really excited to be able to walk through this experience with you guys. And again, please feel free to acquaint yourself with that question and answer feature. I'm more than happy to answer any questions about what I've just talked about or going forward when I talk, when I talk about actually applying to DePaul. There are two ways to apply to DePaul University. We have our own application listed on our website. 
We do not require any supplemental essays. It is very, you know, similar to the Common App, which is the other way to apply to DePaul. I will say, I always encourage my students to use the Common Application. It is gonna be the most straightforward way to apply to our institution. It's free and easy, just like our application, but through the Common App, you actually have access to over 900 colleges and universities as well. As of last year, DePaul became test optional, meaning you do not need to submit an ACT or SAT to be eligible for admission here at DePaul University or be eligible for any of our merit scholarships. About 26% of our enrolling first year students were actually non-submitters. We expect that to be more common this year. What I will say about test optional is that we at DePaul work on a holistic review system. This means that there's not one thing that can admit or deny you from DePaul University. We review your entire application as a whole. If you do not believe that your ACT or SAT accurately represents your academic potential or capabilities, we understand. You do not need to submit that score. Again, you're still gonna be eligible for admission. You're gonna be eligible for all of our merit you know, packages here at DePaul. We also understand that some students worked very hard for their scores and they're very proud of their accomplishments. So again, if you do have scores that you really like, please send them in. We also understand a lot of students have not even been able to take the SAT or ACT. Again, we are test optional. It is not a requirement for admission or merit awards here at DePaul. When I say holistic review, these are some of the things that we're looking at. So I have listed the ACT and SAT, but in addition, we're gonna be looking at your transcript. We wanna see how successful you've been in the past four years you know, in high school when it comes to academic achievement. We're gonna be looking at your curriculum. So what courses are offered at your high school and what courses are you actually taking? Do they offer AP and IB classes? Are you actually challenging yourself and trying to take them? We we'll take that all into consideration. Just because you got you know, a D one time does not mean you're gonna be denied from DePaul. That's the whole point of holistic review. We're gonna look at your grade trend. We're gonna see if you brought up those grades. We also are looking for quality rather than quantity. I rather see you maybe only take three to six AP classes and do really well in them than take 12 APs and get Cs and Ds. So that's something to keep in mind as well. We're gonna look at your senior year. Are you challenging yourself or did you catch a little bit of senioritis and you're slacking off a bit? We'll look at that. We'll also look at your activities. I always like to say that activities are anything you spend meaningful time doing. So yes, this could be Spanish club, National Honor Society. Maybe you're on an athletic team. Maybe you're in DECA or mock trial, but maybe you also have a job after school. Maybe you have family responsibilities that you have to take care of. We understand that students might not be able to spend their time doing high school extracurriculars because they have to have a job or they rather be doing community service or they're a part of a youth group. We understand that activities can encompass a lot of things. So I always tell students, anything you're spending meaningful time doing, Include that in your activities. We love to see what you're involved in and what you could possibly be involved in at DePaul University. Finally, a few other things, a letter of recommendation. This has to be from you know, a teacher or guidance counselor, someone who could speak to your academic credentials. I always say the sweet spot is two to three. I like to be able to get a nice kind of idea of the student's character. So that second or third letter can be from a mentor or a coach. But again, we do require at least one. And finally, affinity. This is just a fancy word for demonstrated interest. By tuning into my session today, by watching my presentation later, by visiting our campus, which is now open to visitors, attending a virtual session, reaching out to your admissions counselor, all of those things show demonstrated interest in DePaul. And that can go a long way. So make sure you're registering for some events on campuses that you're interested in. If you're available to come to Greencastle, Indiana and see us in person, that'd be great too. Again, this is one of the last things I'm gonna talk about in my presentation. So in these last few minutes, please feel free to ask any questions. I'm more than happy to address them, but I do wanna go over some deadlines and financial aid when it comes to DePaul University. Early decision is November 15th for students that is coming up. A few things to note about early decision is that is a binding agreement. This means that if you apply early decision to DePaul, 
and you are admitted, you will agree to attend our university no matter what. This means you will retract all of your other applications from other institutions and commit to DePaul. For some students, that's a great option. DePaul is their number one choice and they have absolutely no hesitations and that's fantastic news. We also understand some students might be, you know, window shopping, looking at a few different colleges and universities. They wanna take some time to think what's gonna be the best fit for them. That's why I encourage a majority of my students to go early action. We wanna be able to get an answer and decision to you as soon as possible. So the sooner you turn in your college application, the sooner you can find out from us. Early action is December 1st. It's a non-binding agreement. Um, if you have any questions about early action versus early decision, please feel free to let me know. Regular decision for DePaul University is February 1st. Again, if you can make that December 1st deadline, amazing, but we also understand there might be some circumstances where you need to submit later, which is fine as well. Financial aid at DePaul is something that is extremely important to talk about as well. We offer immense merit scholarships to our students. You do not need to apply for those in any sort of capacity. You will automatically be reviewed just based on your Common App or DePaul app alone. About 80% of our students receive some form of funding through merit scholarship. What a merit, merit scholarship at DePaul consists of is if you submit test scores and your GPA, that's really all it is. We don't take in outside factors like class rank or the quality of your high school. We're really interested in just how you as an individual perform in the classroom. Our merit scholarships range from 20,000 to 40,000 a year. So that's really exciting news for students who are interested in DePaul. I also always encourage my students to check out some of our additional scholarships. These can come from DePaul themselves. We offer a few additional scholarships and I encourage you to check out our website for those. Additionally, take a look at outside organizations. Scholarship.com has a ton of things available for students and this does not hurt your need-based aid at all. It can just be added on to that final net cost. So I always encourage students to seek out those additional scholarships when it comes to financing your education. Finally, we do offer need-based aid here at DePaul through FAFSA and tax documents if you're a US citizen. This comes in the form of grants, loans, campus employment. About 60% of our students receive funding. We are guaranteeing that this year, if you submit all of your tax documents and everything's on file by December 1st, we will have a total financial aid package to you before the holiday break, which is really exciting. To conclude, I promised my contact information. I know it says Richie Keynes on the Zoom, but my name is Julia Michaels. I'm an admissions counselor and DePaul graduate. These are gonna be the best ways to contact me. Um, if you do have any additional questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. I'm always gonna be available. Um, I'm going to leave this up for just a few more moments and again encourage any attendees to use that question and answer feature. Um, I would love to be able, you know, to take some time, take some time to answer those for you. If not, then I'm going to plug our social media. A great way to stay connected with DePaul if you physically cannot be with us right now is to follow us on social media. My personal favorite is gonna be the Instagram. We do a fantastic job of having it run by students and different people on our campus. So you can get a real authentic view for, you know, what DePaul University is like, especially on our Instagram stories. We always have students doing daily takeovers and Every Monday we, you know, run through every activity that's happening on campus so students can stay informed. Additionally, Zini is a new feature that we're using here at DePaul to connect our class of 2025 together. So if that's you, if you're a senior out there thinking about joining the DePaul Tiger family, Zini might be a great one to join as well. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. I'm going to see if anyone has any other questions. And if not, thank you so much for tuning into my presentation. I really hope we have the opportunity to connect in the future. As always, please do not hesitate to reach out. But thank you again, everybody, so much for attending, attending or listening to my presentation.
Okay, well, if there are no questions, um, you still have a minute here to enter them in. Um, but please, thank you again for joining us. Um, you, when you close out of this, oops, I just, Apologies for that. Thank you for joining us. When you close this window, uh, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey for you. So any feedback that you can provide is much appreciated. And this was just one of many sessions that are being hosted through October 22nd. So make sure that you sign up for any additional sessions at IACAC.org. And in about a week, a recording of this session, as well as all of the other sessions, will also be posted at IAC.org. Thanks again. Have a good night.